What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 26 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series. Now if you're a traditional artist and you like to do a lot of sketches by hand or maybe you're an illustrator and you like to draw in pen, well bringing your images into Photoshop doesn't have to be complicated. So I'm going to give you guys a few ways that you can go about cleaning up your images and really making them shine. Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can clean up your line art in Photoshop. Um, if you're somebody who likes to draw or sketch or do ink or anything like that, um, it's totally cool and um, it's actually pretty easy to you know, fix some of these things and enhance your, your sketches and your drawings so that you can you know, add to them or improve them or uh, even color them if you want. So uh, let me show you guys a few cool things that you can do uh, with your traditional art. Um, the first thing uh, that I notice here is obviously this uh, piece of wood, which is my, my table, as I was taking a picture of this uh, illustration that I did um, just for this tutorial. And, um, you know, so that kind of throws it off a little bit, you know, and it's not, it's not straight. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is kind of straighten this out. So if I select my crop tool, which is C on the keyboard, um, you'll notice that up here, you have something uh, called straighten. It's a little icon that says straighten the image by drawing a line on it. All right, so when I select that, I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key and then click and basically follow um, follow the tilt, you know, follow the angle of the tilt. All right, and then when you let it go, it's basically going to straighten it out and ask you, you know, to crop it. So I don't want to crop in to the artwork, but I do want to get rid of that wood and that you know that background there so that looks pretty good I'm just gonna hit enter and then if you want to um, you know you can also bring the crop tool up here to get rid of some of the bottom um, one other thing that you'll notice here when you have the crop tool selected is this little box that says you know delete cropped pixels um, I don't recommend doing that because um, if for some reason you want to go back uh, to your original image um, you can do that but if you delete the pixels you you can't so uh, the next thing I'm doing here is just duplicating the layer by pressing Command J. And then I'm going to uh, just move it over a little bit to the left and a little bit up so that I can fill in those little gaps on the top as well as the left side. All right, and then I'm going to merge those two layers together um, by clicking the first layer, holding down the Shift key and selecting the, the copy, and then pre pressing uh, Command E on the keyboard to merge them together. All right, then make another copy. And we're going to come up here to image and you'll see you have a few things auto tone auto contrast auto color all right so the nice thing is that we're working on a copy of the layer so if at any point you know we try one of these and we don't like it uh, we can either you know scrap it or, or just undo it all right so um, auto color looks pretty good because it's kind of getting rid of that yellowish tint that you'll see here all right so I'm going to stick with that and then um, what I'm going to do next is I want to kind of boost the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here to the uh, adjustment layers menu and then choose levels. All right. And once you've done that, you can kind of uh, bring this slider in towards the middle, the black slider in towards the middle, and that will add more contrast to the dark parts of your image. Okay. But what happens to the areas where, you know, down here in the bottom left where it gets kind of like dark and you get these shadows and stuff that you you might not really want that well what you can do is kind of mask that out um, on your levels adjustment so all you have to do is make sure you have a solid black selected and then switch to your gradient tool and up here you'll see that you have a gradient that fades from black to transparent which is exactly what we want alright and then just come down in the left corner and click and drag up and that's kind of going to reveal uh, the image below um, and, and removing the effect from that area. Okay, and there's also a little bit happening here around the eye. So you can always come in with a brush, a black brush rather, and, and get rid of some of that, right? So it's not perfect, but you can see how it's already starting to help. Okay, so I'm going to merge those two layers together just so you guys can see, you know, the before and after there. Alright, so what else can I do here? Um, you know, you can come and play around with some of these other things like the hue saturation adjustment um, just to make sure that your image is completely black and white or you could add a black and white adjustment layer 
and set it to either overlay or soft light and then reduce the opacity as needed in order to get even further contrast in your image. Okay, and now as you do this, you can kind of, you know, just continue to merge it so that you can see um, what's happening with the original image. Okay, and then, you know, when you come in, sometimes if you're scanning or taking a picture, you might see, uh, you know, marks from uh, the back of the page or maybe eraser marks and stuff like that. And um, to get rid of that kind of stuff, you can use our handy retouching tool, the, the spot healing brush, to just click over those areas and make sure that you have sample all layers checked off. Now I've shown you guys this tool a little bit before and um, it's, an, it's a tool that I kind of use interchangeably along with the, uh, the clone stamp tool. So uh, either one of these tools uh, should suffice. All right, and you just have to go through and kind of clean it up a little bit at a time and try to get rid of those lines, right? But you'll see it's it's fairly easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and every once in a while, it'll look a little janky. So you want to come in and maybe use your, you know, try a different tool. Um, but ultimately, we're looking for the, the same result here. So you kind of see how that works, OK? And I'm just going to continue to work on the sleeve a little bit, get rid of these marks here, any areas that are you know overlapping, and um, just so we can end up with a nice clean image. All right, and you'll see there's a little more uh, happening here around the hand that we that we don't really want. So I'm just just can you know try and get in there and, and do this kind of quick. Uh, normally I would you know try to spend a little bit more time doing this, so I'm. Uh, not being as careful as I normally would be, um, but that's just so I can, you know, show you guys the, the methods to the madness here. All right, so I think you guys kind of get the idea where this is going, but uh, one other thing I want to show you guys that you can do here is, um, you know, flip your canvas, and, and that's something that I learned, um, you know, from uh, from digital painting, and, and, you know, a lot of painters will, will tell you this, and illustrators they flip the canvas a lot and then you know you might say why you know why do you flip the canvas well you want to come to image image rotation and flip horizontal so that you can see you know that there are obviously some uh, proportional issues and things that are a little bit off you know when you're used to looking at an image the same way from the same angle um, you know the whole time that you're drawing uh, you might miss things like that so again image image rotation flip canvas horizontal and that will usually reveal any kind of uh, proportional issues that you have. Okay, so once you spot those things, I'm just going to make a duplicate of the layer. Um, once you spot those things, you can correct them by using our friend the liquify tool. Okay, so if you come in here, you can you know increase or decrease the size of your brush, and you can come in and kind of you know push and pull some of these things around, right? And I've showed you guys a little bit in one of my previous videos how this tool works. You know, and you can use the, the freeze brush, I believe it was called. Um, if there's a, the freeze mask tool, sorry, if there's an area that you are happy with and you don't want to modify, like, you know, this whole arm pretty much, and, you know, the hands are okay. It's really just the, uh, the, the shape of the face that I want to change. So I'm going to mask all of this, okay, and even the hat now. So I just fixed that. And with that, I will only be working on the face, okay? So you can either, you know, bloat it a little bit if you want to make her look like she has some, you know, bigger cheekbones, or maybe you want to pull in a certain area to make it look like it's receding into space. Uh, you can do that there as well. And, you know, if you mess up, don't worry, because you can always undo, all right? And that's the beauty of uh, working digitally, you know, and being able to uh, actually manipulate your images in Photoshop like this. So now, uh, when you go and flip your canvas uh, back the other way, you'll see it looks a little bit different, you know, but much improved. All right, and these are just a few of the things that you can do. I mean, once you uh, get this to pretty much, you know, a solid black and white, um, you can even push it further by applying something like a brightness contrast layer or a curves layer, um, just to try and get it, get it even even further along. All right, let's try a curves adjustment and see if that helps. 
Yeah, so you don't want it to be totally blown out, but you do want to try and get as much contrast as you can from the image. All right. And then once you're happy with that, um, what I like to do actually is change the blending mode of that layer to multiply, right? And then you can create a new layer underneath and you can actually start to color your image, right? So if you just have some line art here, and let's say you want to, you know, start to actually paint it and eventually cover up your lines, you can do that um, by underpainting um, underneath your multiply layer, right? Which is a lot of fun, you know. It's a it's a it's a different approach because a lot of people um, might want to paint directly in Photoshop or you know, draw directly in Photoshop and, and that's totally fine too. You know, it's all up to you and, and what works best for you. So um, I encourage you guys to experiment with that and, you know, try some different stuff out. You know, especially with all the, uh, you know, blending modes that you have at your disposal here. You know, there's really an unlimited number of, you know, combinations that you can you can get. So, um, you know, you can you can build this up and it's a pretty cool effect. So, um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully found some of these tips useful. And um, I'd love to see how you guys use this in your, in your own projects, and your own illustrations. Um, I know a lot of you guys out there who may feel more comfortable, you know, drawing by hand and maybe you don't use a tablet a lot. Um, but I would highly recommend you getting one, especially if you want to, uh, you know, ex experiment with this a little bit more. Um, it's much easier to do with a tablet than it is with a mouse. So... Um, this is really, you know, quick and dirty, but I just wanted to give you guys a little preview of, of some of the things that you can do uh, here in Photoshop with your traditional work. So um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this, and if you have, uh, please go ahead and sign up for a free email list and let us know how we can help you design better.